Hello students, a hearty welcome to you this online mode of teaching English. Uh, I am sure you have already been accessed to this online mode uh, of Webex app. Maybe uh, subjects like physics or chemistry or mathematics has been already taught to you. Taught to you. But I would, you know, go to a little different mode of teaching that is YouTube or offline or you can watch it whatever way you want. And I'm, I have chosen this mode of teaching because you can have uh, access whenever you want. There may not be an issue of network problem so that whenever there is network or wherever there is network, you can download the lesson and you can go through the lesson you can understand the lesson. Uh, so the first lesson that we are going to have is uh, I am sure the textbook is in front of you. If you do not have, please keep the textbook. Even if you have not got hold of one textbook, please find somewhere and uh, just take the photocopies of the first lesson and keep it in front of you so that it will be easier for you to understand this lesson. And the first lesson that we are going to study from your textbook is The Gentleman of the Jungle. The Gentleman of the Jungle. Now, the girls need not get upset. It is about gentlemen and what about us? Well, the gentleman can be a common terminology that is used for uh, some dignified personality or in the present terminology we may call him as a well-behaved personality, uh, whatever it is. But here, the meaning of the gentleman we would come to know at the end of the lesson what exactly it is meant. What exactly it is meant. Now, the introduction of the lesson says, uh, this particular lesson is written by Yomo Kenyatta. Kenyatta. Okay, this is an African name, a Kenyan name. Though the spelling is Jomo, it is pronounced as Yomo Kenyatta. Now, this particular person, uh, the writer of this particular story, particular story, the gentleman of the jungle, is an African uh, political leader and he himself is a gentleman. Remember, the meaning of this gentleman is different than the title of this lesson. And he was the first president of Kenya, that is from 1964 to 1978, almost for a period of 18 years, you can see him being the president of Kenya. And he belongs to a particular tribe in Kenya, in South Africa. You must remember South Africa has got many tribal people like India. Uh, for example, in our own uh, neighborhood, we have got to, uh, uh, different tribal people to name them, maybe Lambani tribe. Or if you go to Nagaland, you've got Naga tribe, Assam, you've got Bodo tribe. Okay, so different tribes are there. So in South Africa, there is a tribe called Kikuyu tribe, Kikuyu. And uh, uh, the author of the, the writer of this story, Yomyo Kenata, Kenyatta, belongs to this Kikuyu uh, tribe. And he was one of the earliest and best known African nationalist leaders, well known nationalist leaders. As secretary of his tribal association, he campaigned for land reform and African political rights. Now, we can call him as a freedom fighter, fighter for Africa or African freedom fighter, fighter. Freedom fighter or freedom from whom? Mm, that is the crux of this particular story. Uh, freedom from the European imperial power or from European imperialism. Now I am sure this particular time, uh, word term imperialism is very known to you very known to you because in your social science, social studies, you have studied this European imperialism. That is how back from 16th century, 1600 uh, or afterwards, uh, say 17 or 18th century, how the British powers or British came to India and they colonized, colonized the Indian territory, Indian territory. Hence, what is imperialism? Imperialism is a policy or an ideology of extending the rule, the political rule, the authority of a country over other countries and people. And how this is done? 
In the present context, it is a little difficult to understand for us because such a problem is not there. But I am speaking about 16th, 17th, 18th century when European power, especially the British power, was very, very powerful. And they would go to the ends of the world and they had, imperi uh, and they had colonized the whole world. I am sure you know very well how. From 1857, we have the freedom struggle, which means prior to that, how uh, East India Company and then how the British started colonizing India, India. And how did they do? Either through their military power or by gaining political and economic control. We could say the British came to India for trade, for trade, okay? But they just, you know, colonized the whole India. They, they caught hold of the whole India and how? In the name of political and economic control. Now, this particular economic control is very, very important for us to understand this particular story also. Here we are studying how the European power, it is not mentioned which European, whether it is the Dutch or whether it is the British, most probably it is the British, how the British colonized Africa, Africa when? The later part of 19th century, the later part of 19th century. So, say from 1815 onwards or the later part, they colonized the African power. So, the introduction of the lesson tells you that, you know, in the 19th century, the chief European powers divided Africa among themselves. They could do this because European arms were superior and because the African chiefs did not understand the meaning of treaties they were asked to sign. While well, studying 1857 freedom struggle, Indian freedom struggle, or we can call the first Indian war for freedom, we had studied one of the reasons why Indians got defeated because we had outdated arms with us, outdated arms, and the British had rather modern arms with them, belonging, uh, fitting to that particular time, 1857. We had outdated arms, maybe say arrows or simple guns, but they had better equipments, better arms to fight against. Hence, they won one of the reasons. So, here also we could see that Europeans could extend their power in Africa because their arms were superior. They could fight because African tribes must have fought with bow and arrow, but they had superior uh, guns. Okay, So, better arms and they signed some treaties, some agreement, agreements and the Africans did not understand what was there. What is the reason they did not understand? Because they were not educated. They were not educated. Hence, British signed the treaty and the African chiefs, who is the chief, the head of the tribe, head of the tribe, they went on signing without knowing the content of the treaty, content of the treaty. That's why today, whenever you sign some agreement, it's important that you go through the agreement. Sometimes, especially LIC policy or any other policy or agreement, we simply blindly sign. They ask us to sign and we sign without knowing the content. And this mistake was done by Africans because they were not aware and they took the British for their face word, for the value of the, uh, the words. And they signed and they had to pay for it, pay for it. Okay. So here we are going to study exactly this particular aspect. As a result, the Africans lost the lands they had traditionally lived and cultivated okay as a result what happened the british signed treaties and africans signed and the british took over the land so the african people lost the land which traditionally they had cultivated cultivated their attitude towards european expansion is made clear in the following fable this particular story fable fable story which reflects the attitude of the kikuyu people of kenya towards european laws and commissions so, in this particular story, it is called as a fable. You know, in fable is a popular story where animal characters are many. So, here also you will find, you will not find uh, human beings except one. Rest all animal characters. In English literature, we also have another genre of, uh, uh, what should I say, another genre of uh, literature where we call it as a satire, satire. And what is a satire? It's a use of uh, humor or irony or exaggeration to ridicule or to expose and criticize people's stupidity or vices, particularly in the context of policies or other topical issues. Modern day, if I tell you something like, you know, 
in the social media we have a concept called trolling trolling when something happens people make different memes people make different uh, banners and all and they throw they pull the legs of the people and uh, you cannot catch them because uh, the, the, something different but uh, deeply it is meant or hinted towards someone similarly in old in literature we have a style it is called satire satire where again animals are the characters or some other way where a present or a particular policy a particular system is made fun of made fun of and indirectly it has been conveyed to the person who is responsible that this is not correct this is not correct or the people are not fools okay it is a genre it is a type of literature usually a fiction remember which one i am speaking about satire it's written with the, an intention of shaming putting to shame the individuals corporations government or society with a purpose of improvement so this satire is written with a purpose of improving the system imagine i am not happy with the policies of the present day government so i write a story in which government is not represented as government it is represented by some animals or something else actually the people when they read they understand that this is hinted at the government policy and when it is published when it is read by everybody everybody comes to know about it everybody comes to know about it you know today's trolling as i said in social media can be compared to a set up set higher can be not uh, need not be if you are, if at all you have studied some stories like huckleberry finn by mark twain the rape of the lock very strange title by alexander pope gulliver's travels by jonathan swift animal farm by george orwell this is one of the greatest satire is called animal farm written by george orwell it is about russian totalitarianism authoritarianism you know when the uh, prior to russian revolution this particular writer george orwell had written written a fiction and the name of the fiction is animal farm where all the animals are the characters and there he makes fun of the russian authority russian authoritarianism totalitarianism or authoritarianism you know it is uh, a system it is a power system where individuals are not respected opposition there is no opposition at all in fact opposition there is no status given to them then uh, high degree of control by the government such system can be called as totalitarianism authoritarianism it is quite opposed to democracy but sometimes even democracy has come to that level we can't help it okay now i'm sure many things i have told you but these things are very important to understand this lesson if you do not understand whatever i have said you when we come back to the classroom we will make the things very clear so now we will go and understand the lesson okay uh, i have prepared some slides and i'm sure these slides will help us to uh, understand the lesson better okay i'm sure you have your textbook with you at the same time even the slides also will help you to understand this particular lesson okay let me go to the slides and explain to you the lesson now okay so the title of the lesson is the gentleman of the jungle as i told you already it is written by yomo kenata yomo kenata during the 19th century europe was a mighty power europe i refer to europe in terms of england british power especially the british imperialism imperialism i told you already it's a system of you know establishing power political power on another country another country okay especially through military power or by political or economic control they colonized to the other parts of the world making use of the poor social economic educational and political situation prevailing we need not go far we know very well what happened in india how the british came and when they came the situation economically we were very backward educationally there absolutely there was no education caste system and small small kingdoms here and there we were not one and the british made use of it though they had come for trade purpose they turned into colonizers same thing they did even in south africa okay and south africa was much worse than or bad worse than india this story presents to us the poor situation of african continent okay under the european 
imperial powers. In fact, the African continent was called the dark continent. Dark not because there was no sunshine, dark because the situation was very, very bad. Economic or political, educational, all the way it was very bad. The Africans lost their fertile land to the expansion attitude of Europeans. That is, the British went and expanded their rule, colonized more and more area, and the Africans lost their fertile land. Well executed through the European laws and commissions. Since Europeans were well educated and Africans were not educated, so the Europeans established their power in South Africa. So in this story, this is the background. The Europeans have established their power in South Africa and the situation is bad. And how Yomo Kenyatta is presenting, presenting to us the poor situation of the Africans. Okay. But remember, at the end, we will come to know, you know, you cannot control anybody for a longer time. It's like a spring. How long can you keep a spring pressed? At one moment, it erupts. At one moment, it comes back. Similarly, here, the Europeans could not keep South Africa under their rule for longer time, as it happened in India. Even they could not keep India under control beyond 1947. 1947, we achieved our freedom. Even the Africans achieved their freedom. Okay, But how they did it? Or what were the things leading to that? Very beautifully, Yomo Kenyatta used rights in this fable or in this we, I can call it as a satire or a fable, whatever way possible. Okay, let us study the lesson. Once upon a time, an elephant made friendship with a man. One day, a heavy thunderstorm broke out. The elephant went to his friend, who had a little hut at the edge of the forest, and said to him, My dear man, will you please let me put my trunk inside your hut to keep it out of this torrential rain? Okay, now, what is there? No, there is a man. Now remember, this particular man represents the population of South Africa. Everybody. Though he is one, a kind of cynic, okay? Okay, though he is one. Here we are speaking about one man, but actually in reality he represents everybody. So, this man. Once there was a man. Now, one elephant developed friendship with him in the guise of seeking shelter. You see, how strange that an animal should develop friendship with a man. Okay, so this animal, a strong animal, you can know, you, you, you can imagine how strong would be an elephant. So, elephant approaches the man, man and asks for some space, some place. And what for? Very simple, he says, I would like to protect my trunk. Okay, the elephant has got a long trunk. Okay, something that looks like a snake, a long trunk. You can see in the second slide here the uh, a trunk, a trunk of the elephant. This part of the elephant, okay, it's called a trunk, right? So he says, "I want to protect my trunk from the torrential rain." Okay, now the Africa during that time there was a thick forest, and we have heard about this. So lot of rains, lot of rains. So the elephant goes to the man and says, "I want to protect my trunk. Hence, give me some place where inside the hut." Inside the hut. Will the man agree? Let's see. The man seeing what situation his friend was in. Now already there is a friendship between the elephant and the man. So the man feels pity. Man feels pity. You see, the man, you know, we have a heart. We don't have only mind or brain. We have a heart. And in the mind we think from the heart we feel. The man feels. Man feels. Remember, here we have got an African man. To look at, he may look very black. We may consider him uneducated. But his heart is full of love. But his heart is full of concern. And that is the hallmark of a man, not the education. Okay? The hallmark of a man is character. The hallmark of a man is how he feels when the other one is in difficulty. So here, the man feels almost pity for the animal. Okay? He, you know, seeing the situation his friend was in. What was the situation his friend was in? Elephant was getting wet, getting wet in the rain. Now you can imagine elephants do not have a house anywhere. Usually in the forest they get wet. They may go and stand under a tree. They may go and stand uh, just below the tree, but uh, every time they get wet. Now you must understand, uh, you know, the hidden agenda of this particular animal. And uh, you must have understood now whom does the animal represent. The animal represents actually the European power, European power. 
You see, an animal which doesn't have a house, which doesn't stay in the house, goes to a man and asks for a place. Okay, so what does the man reply? My dear good elephant. Can you see? Before elephant, there is an adjective. Good elephant. Okay, the man considers the elephant as good elephant. But actually, is it good? We will come to know at the end. My hut is very small. See, the man lives in a very small hut. Very small hut. It is not a building. It is a hut. Very well, you can make out here. I have put an image, representative image. Very small hut. So, he says, well, my hut is very small. But, but, there is room for your trunk and myself. Please put your trunk in gently. You see, the man says, my hut is very, very small. But still, there is place for your trunk. You please put your trunk inside and your trunk will be saved from the torrential, from the heavy rain outside. See, always this is what happens. Poor people, you know, when you approach them for help, they are ready to help. Because they are economically very bad, but their heart is very big. Their heart is very big. And I have experienced this and I have seen many other places. Sometimes when you go to some rich people's house, from the gate only they will chase us out. Hey, Nunda Kehoku, don't come here. They have enough, but they are not ready to help. You see, this particular man, I have nothing against the rich people. God has given them. But very sadly, God has not given to poor people. But they are always ready to give. Always ready to give. And this poor man says, it's very small. But still, I can give you place to keep your trunk. See, this man replies replies without thinking anything. He is a man, we say, without guide. Guide meaning to say, there is no deception. No, there is no fooling inside. He is a clean-hearted man. He sees that elephant is come in search of some help and it is possible and he is ready to help. The elephant thanked his friend. Now, elephant is very, very happy because the elephant could see that his purpose is getting achieved now. It is which, but the man never knew that was the beginning of his End. I repeat, the man never knew this was the beginning of his end. Okay, what does the elephant say? You have done me a good deed and one day I shall return your kindness. Mark these words. What did the elephant say? You have done me a good deed. Yes, man has done a very good deed. Man has been very kind. But the reply elephant says, one day I shall return your kindness. We will see in the, or in the, during the story, in the process, that elephant doesn't return the kindness. It becomes ungrateful. Okay? Elephant becomes ungrateful. We will come to know. Please remember, so far, we have studied about this man who has got a hut and man represents a poor African people. Then comes the elephant asking for shelter to protect its trunk from the torrential rain. And remember, the elephant represents the European power. European power. And you see how it enters. First, its trunk. I don't know, in a local language, colloquial, we always say cockroach, you know. Cockroach has got two antennas. And it's enough that these antennas get in through a creek, okay, or where there's a crack. Afterwards, the whole cockroach can enter inside. It just wants that the antenna should go inside, okay. Meaning to say, in the in other words, we say, if you give the finger, there are people who swallow your whole hand. First, they want your finger, then your hand, uh, then the everything. Similarly, here, the elephant gains access into the house of the man. Now, remember, this house of the man refers to the whole African or Kenya or African continent. This is how the Europeans gained access. They enter, they enter. And what is going to happen? Let's see. But what followed? But what followed? As soon as the elephant put his trunk inside the hut, slowly he pushed his head inside and finally flung the man out in the rain. And then lay down, comfort, lay down comfortably inside his friend's hut, saying, My dear good friend, your skin is harder than mine. As there is not enough room for both of us, you can afford to remain in the rain while I am protecting my delicate skin from the hailstorm. Okay, can you see this image here? Okay, here there is a bathtub and the elephant is in the bathtub. Purposefully I searched for this image, you know why? 
elephant never bathes or takes bath in a bathtub. In other words, the elephant never stays in a man-made hut. So here, how elephant is occupied? Now, what the elephant has done? No sooner did the elephant get inside than it pushed the man out. Okay, first it put its trunk. Okay, then what did it do? Then it slowly pushed his head and finally flung the man out. Whose hut it is? It was built by man. Whose land it is? Man. An elephant has no right whatsoever. But you see how it gained access and pushed the man out. Did I say in the previous paragraph that I would return, I should return your kindness? This is what the elephant said. And now we see, see how the elephant has already returned the kindness. What it has done? It has become ungrateful. It has not returned the kindness. It has just, the elephant has pushed the man outside. And what are the reasons why it pushed the man outside? Or why it remained inside the hut? The elephant justifies. It says, you know, I am right. Why? Reasons, he says. Reason number one, he says, your skin is harder than mine. Now you must understand, Europeans are white-skinned people, white-skinned people, I am sure you have seen, British or Europeans, they are white-skinned, whereas the, Euro, uh, the Africans, the Kenyan people, they are black-skinned people and by nature they are very rough people. So here the elephant says, elephant says, your skin is harder than mine. In fact, we know very well whose skin is harder, elephant skin is harder, nothing happens. You go and hit elephant, nothing happens. If I hit your skin, you know, it will turn red. It will turn red. But go and hit the elephant. It can't even make out that somebody has hit because its skin is harder. But here the elephant says, your skin is harder than mine and my skin is very delicate. As if the elephant is using fair and lovely. As if the elephant is using body lotion to protect its skin. As if the elephant is using some sunscreen to protect it. says, my skin is delicate. Okay, or your skin is harder than mine. And there is no enough space for both of us inside the hut. But how can the elephant say? The man could say there is not enough space. Do you remember in the beginning what did the man say? My hat is very small but there is space for both of us. And now the elephant says there is not enough space for both of us in the hut. So what shall we do? You go out, I will remain inside. And then he says you can afford to remain in the rain. Actually who can afford to remain in the rain? The elephant can because that is how the elephant is, uh, that's how elephant remains, lives. There is no house for it. But now exactly the opposite things happen. The elephant says, you can afford to remain in the rain while I am protecting my delicate skin from the hailstorm. So I told you heavy rain, thunderstorm, heavy rains. So he says, I protect my delicate skin from the thunderstorm. I am sure by now you have understood how the methods, the techniques Europeans used to uh, colonize South Africa or African continent. Okay, so here the man situation is, uh, the African situation is represented by this particular man. So now you understood how the elephant has occupied the man and the now man is out on the road, out on the open air, out on the open air. There is no house for him, he had built one house and the elephant has occupied it. What happens next? The man seeing what his friend had done to him started to grumble. Okay. Quite normal, isn't it? The man would grumble because his hard earned efforts, his hard, his sweat, the fruit of his sweat is that house. And now that house has been occupied by an elephant. And that too, deceptively, first it asked to keep its trunk. When it was allowed, it came and pushed the man out. So man started to grumble. The animals in nearby forest heard the noise and came to see what was the matter. For these animals, these animals are not the wild animals in the forest. Of course, in reality they are, but they represent all the other uh, colonizers who had come. In other words, they are the different officers from the Europe or the British, okay, who had come to South Africa. Okay, they come, they come. You see how Yomo Kenyatta uh, represents them in the name of different animals. So all these animals in that forest, they come. And what do they see? They want to know what is the matter. The animals in the forest came to see the seriousness of the matter because they could hear the man grumbling. All stood around listening to the heated argument between the man and his friend, the elephant. Okay, so man was arguing with the elephant. What is that? That the hut belongs to him. And what was the elephant telling? That hut belongs to him. 
Okay, so there was argument, heated argument, exchanges. So all the animals were listening. In this turmoil, in this confusion, turmoil, in this confusion, the lion came along roaring and said in a loud voice, Don't you all know that I am the king of the jungle? How dare anyone disturb the peace of my kingdom? Now we know in the forest we have lion and the lion is considered the king of the forest. So the lion could you see that the peace of the forest is disturbed. Peace of the forest. You must remember there is always peace in the forest. Even though there are wild animals, there is always peace in the forest which we don't have in the society. Okay, there is no peace in the society, but in the forest there is always peace. So, because of this heated argument between the animal, the elephant and the man, the peace was disturbed and the lion comes into the picture now and says, How dare you disturb the peace of my kingdom? Okay, animal is telling his kingdom, its kingdom. On hearing this, the elephant, who was one of the high ministers in the jungle kingdom, replied in a soothing voice and said, Now remember, Elephant is not an ordinary animal. It is one of the high ministers. There are many ministers. Remember, all these animals, they are the different officers. Okay. They are the different bureaucrats who had come from Africa, from Europe to Africa. Europe to Africa. Okay. We can, in Indian terms, we can call them viceroys. Okay. Sergeant, viceroys. How we went about different people. Okay. So, they had come from there. So, here, elephant is one of the high-ranking ministers. And what did the elephant tell now? My lord, my lord, in the, that's a way of addressing the king. Always king is addressed as my lord or your lordship, your lordship. Okay, my lord, there is no disturbance of the peace in your kingdom. The elephant, very, 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 it takes matter very simple, very simple, makes it very simple and says, no, 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 no don't misunderstand. There is no disturbance of peace in the kingdom. I have only been having a little discussion with my friend. Who is the friend? The man. So, elephant says, there is a kind of discussion between my friend and me. What is that? As to the possession of this little hut, which your lordship sees me occupying. So, the elephant says, well, there is no problem. There is a discussion. Say, I am occupying this particular hut. Now, you know, already the elephant is inside the hut. And the elephant is telling, well, there is a discussion about the ownership of this hut. You can see me occupying this hut. So it is mine. It is mine. But man is saying it belongs to him. And I say it is mine. So there is a confusion now. There is a kind of discussion as to whom does this particular uh, hut belong to. Now, the lion wanted to have peace and tranquility in his kingdom. Remember, already the lion came and questioned. Oh, how dare you to disturb the peace of my kingdom. So, lion wanted to have peace and tranquility in his kingdom. Replied in a noble voice, very humble, very noble voice, kingly voice, very solemn voice. What is that? I command my ministers to appoint a commission of inquiry to go thoroughly into the matter and report accordingly. Now, lion is the king, so the peace is disturbed. So, he says, I command, is an order from me. Okay, like a presidential order. It's an order. Okay, it says, I command my ministers, what for? To appoint a commission of inquiry. Commission of inquiry. Okay, a kind of, you know, to settle the matter. A commission of inquiry. Commission, a committee of people who inquire. Okay, and report me accordingly. Report. And the report should be submitted to me. He then turned to the man and said, then the lion turned to the man and said, You have done well by establishing friendship with my people, especially with the elephant, who is one of my honorable ministers of state. Okay? Now the elephant says, My dear young man, good. I am very happy about what? That you have made friendship with my people, and especially with the elephant, because the elephant is a high ranking minister, minister of state, minister of state, and you have done well by establishing friendship. You think he has done well? No, that's a mistake the man has done. But Africans were not knowing. They were simply signing the treaty. Whatever the British, the Europeans said, they accepted it because they were not knowing the deep-rooted purpose of Europeans. Okay, so here, see how Yomo Kenata brings it out. And he says, you have done well. Do not grumble anymore. 
your heart is not lost to you. Elephant says, sorry, the lion says, don't grumble. Okay, your heart is not lost, not lost. Wait until the sitting of my imperial commission. So what is the name of the commission? The name of the commission is imperial commission. Imperial commission of inquiry. Okay, it was appointed by the lion. What for? To look into the matter, to look into the problem between the elephant and the man. So he says, my, my commission would sit, imperial commission, and then you will be given plenty of opportunity to state your case. Okay, like a trial takes place in the court where both the parties are there. Similarly, elephant's party and your party, you will come and you will be given time to speak. And even elephant will be given time to speak and justice will be done. If it is yours, it will be given to you. You have nothing to worry. Now you can tell me, you know, who are these animals to come and rule over man? Who are the animals to settle a matter for man? Because man is given intelligence. Animals do not have. Similarly here, who are the Europeans to come and get into or poke their bloody nose into the matter of Africans? But that is a sad situation or the repercussion of imperialism, imperialism or the evil effect of colon, colonization, colonization. So he says, well, we will sit. I have appointed a commission of inquiry. I will sit and justice will be done to you. I am sure that you will be pleased with the findings of the commission. The lion says, when the report is given, you will be very happy, very happy. The man was very pleased by the sweet words from the king of the jungle. The man was very happy. I told you, this man is a simple hearted man. He is a straight hearted man. He believes on the face value. When the lion said, commission would be appointed and justice would be done. Your heart is not lost. Man believed it. He was very happy that he would get back his heart. He would get back his heart. You just imagine, you are coming by a cycle or a two wheeler to the college. And when you are out of the college, a man is sitting on the bike and says, this is mine. This is mine. Okay. And you say, no, that is mine. That is mine. Then he says, let's go to the court. Court will decide. Is it justifiable? You don't require a court for that. It is your bike. You have brought it. From nowhere, man is come and occupied. He is taking, taking the position. Similarly, the man felt here. Why should I go to the court? Even if I go to the court, the bike is mine. You know very well because you have got papers with you. But was it the case here with the Africans? Was it the case with the man here? We do not know. Let's see what are the findings of the commission of inquiry. The man was very pleased by these sweet words from the king of the jungle and innocently waited for his opportunity in the belief that naturally the heart would be returned to him. The man is very innocent and he waited innocently. The commission would sit for the inquiry. He would be called to witness or to give his version of the story and the commission would give back his heart to him. He said, sooner things would be fine. Sooner the things would be fine. And he innocently waited for such a thing. For a day when the elephant would go out of the hut and he would have the ownership of his hut. Will this happen? Will the commission do justice? Will the man get back his hut? We have no idea. But we will see this in the next part of the lesson, in the second part of the lesson. For today, this is enough. Thank you very much. Please uh, read again and you will understand or the view the lesson on the YouTube again and you will understand.